Headway Intermediate, 4th edition, by John and Liz Sauls, published in copyright, Oxford University Press, 2009. CD1 Unit 1 Tape Script 1.1 One World Quiz 1. In which country do men and women live the longest? Women and men live longest in Japan. Women live, on average, 86 years and men 79. The average life expectancy in Japan is 81.25. In the USA, it's 77.8 and in Germany, 78.8. 2. In which year did the world population reach 6 billion? The world population reached 6 billion in 1999. There are now over 6.8 billion people in the world. 3. If you're standing on the equator, how many hours of daylight do you have? If you are standing on the equator, you have 12 hours of daylight every day of the year. You also experience the fastest sunrise and sunset in the world between 128 and 142 seconds, depending on the time of year. 4. Where does most of the world's oil come from? Most of the world's oil comes from Saudi Arabia. It produces 10.9 million barrels per day. Russia produces 9.4 million and Iran 4.3 million. 5. Which of these seven wonders of the world is still standing? Of the seven wonders of the ancient world, only the pyramids of Egypt are still standing. The Colossus of Rhodes and the Lighthouse of Alexandria were destroyed by earthquakes hundreds of years ago. 6. Why didn't dinosaurs attack humans? Dinosaurs didn't attack humans because they became extinct 65 million years ago. Human beings didn't appear on Earth until 130,000 years ago. 7. Where was the Titanic sailing to when it sank? The Titanic was sailing to New York from Southampton when it hit an iceberg on April 14, 1912. 8. How long has Elizabeth II been Queen of England? Elizabeth II has been Queen of England since 1952. She was on holiday in Kenya when her father, King George VI, died. 9. How many people have won the Nobel Peace Prize since it started in 1901? 94 people have won the Nobel Peace Prize since it started in 1901. These include Nelson Mandela in 1993 and Mother Teresa in 1979. 10. How long have people been using the Internet? People have been using the Internet since 1969. It was invented by the US Department of Defense as a means of communication. It first went live in October 1969 with communications between the University of California and the Stanford Research Institute. 11. How many languages are spoken in Switzerland? Four languages are spoken in Switzerland. German, French, Italian and Romansh. German is the most widely spoken. 63.7% speak German, 19.2% French, 7.6% Italian and 0.6% Romansh. 12. In which country were women first given the vote? New Zealand was the first country in the world to give women the vote in 1893. Canadian women were given the vote in 1917, but women in Liechtenstein weren't allowed to vote until 1984. Tape script 1.2. You're so wrong. 1. The Pope lives in Madrid. <laughs> he doesn't live in Madrid. He lives in Rome, in the Vatican. 2. 
Shakespeare didn't write poems. You're wrong. He wrote hundreds of poems, not just plays. Three. Vegetarians eat meat. Of course they don't eat meat. They only eat vegetables and sometimes fish. Four. The internet doesn't provide much information. Rubbish. It provides lots. Sometimes I think that it provides too much. Five. The world is getting colder. It isn't getting colder. It's getting hotter. Haven't you heard of global warming? Six. Princess Diana was travelling by plane when she was killed. No, you're wrong. She wasn't travelling by plane. She was travelling by car in Paris. Seven. England has never won the World Cup. <laughs> England has won it. Just once. I think it was in 1966. My dad goes on about it all the time. Eight. The 2008 Olympics were held in Tokyo. No, they weren't held in Tokyo. They were held in China, in Beijing. Tape script 1.3. Is or has? 1. My brother's just got a new job. 2. He's working in South America. 3. He's been there three months. 4. He's having a great time. 5. He's never worked overseas before. 6. His company's called Intext Worldwide. Tape script 1.4. Making conversation. So, kids, did you have a good day at school? No. Yes, I did. We were practising for the school concert. Oh, lovely. Oh, do you have much homework? Oh, yes, I do. Loads. Oh. I've got geography, French and maths. Have you got a lot, Nick? Yeah. Nick, have you remembered your football kit? Uh... No, he hasn't. He's forgotten it again. Oh, Nick, you know it needs washing. Are you playing football tomorrow? No. Lily, do you need your sports kit tomorrow? Yes, I do. I've got a hockey match after school. We're playing the high school. Oh, didn't they beat you last time? Yes, they did. But we'll beat them tomorrow. No, you won't. Your team's rubbish. OK, that's enough, children. Do up your seatbelts. Let's go. <sighs> Tape script 1.5 So, kids, did you have a good day at school? No, I didn't. Not really. We didn't have any of my favourite subjects. I did. I had a brilliant day. You were practising for the school concert. Oh, lovely. Oh, do you have much homework? Uh, yes, I do. Loads. Oh. I've got geography, French and maths. Have you got a lot, Nick? Yes, I have. Loads of it. I have to write a geography essay on Antarctica. Fifteen hundred words. Oh, Nick, have you remembered your football kit? Oh, no, I haven't. Sorry, Mum. Oh, Nick, you know it needs washing. Are you playing football tomorrow? No, I'm not, thank goodness. The match was cancelled. Lily, do you need your sports kit tomorrow? Yes, I do. I've got a hockey match after school. We're playing the high school. <laughs> Didn't they beat you last time? Yes, they did. But we'll beat them tomorrow. Mm, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> OK, that's enough, children. Do up your seatbelts. Let's go. Tape script 1.6. 1. 
Did you hear that noise? Yes, I did. I think it was thunder. Two. Are you doing anything tonight? No, I'm not. Do you want to come round? Three. Have you seen my mobile phone anywhere? No, I haven't. Have you lost it again? Four. Did you get those shoes you liked? No, I didn't. They didn't have my size. Five. Is it time for a break? Yes, it is, thank goodness. Tape script 1.7. A world in one family. An interview with Zabia. So, Zabia, uh, how old are you? I'm 21. And I know you have an interesting background. What nationality are you? Well, I've got a British passport. So you're British, uh, but your parents, what nationality are your parents? Well, my dad's Bolivian. He was born in Bolivia in South America. But he's had a British passport for the last 20 years. My mum was born in Spain, in the Basque Country, mm -hmm. and she still has her Spanish passport. So how did they meet and end up having children in England? Um, they met when they were both studying English in England. Um, <laughs> And uh, about three years after that, they got married, and here I am. <laughs> and then my brother. And what was it like growing up in England with a Spanish mother and a Bolivian father? I don't think I actually noticed nationality for years. Um, probably the first time I really noticed a difference was at secondary school. England were playing Spain in Euro 96, and my classmates made me choose which country to support. <laughs> so which country did you support? I stayed neutral. Uh, actually, I didn't mind which team won. And which nationality do you feel now? I'd say I was English rather than British. Um, <laughs> but I'm also very proud of my parents' heritage, half Basque and half Bolivian. I like that. What contact have you had with your family abroad? Well, I've only actually been to Bolivia once, um, when I was a baby. I've had more contact on my mum's side. My Spanish grandparents visit us in England, and when I was growing up, we always went to Spain in the summer. And, Very nice. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, if I'm at home, I speak to them, uh, to my grandparents on the phone, uh, maybe once a week. And do you think that your Spanish heritage has influenced you at all? Well, yes, I think so. I, I think it influenced my degree choice. I'm studying modern languages at Durham University, Spanish and French. Hmm. I'm in my third year. I have one more year to do. And what are you hoping to do in the future? Um, well, <laughs> that's a very good question. Um, hopefully a job that offers some kind of opportunity to travel... But ultimately, I want to settle down for good in England. I've always been interested in my background, but I think that I realise England is my home and it's where I see myself living. Thank you very much, Xavier. You're welcome. Tape script 1.8. An interview with Anna. Anna, you're Spanish, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'm from Bilbao, in the Basque country. And how long have you lived here in Oxford? Oh, 23 years. And how did that happen? Well, I wanted to improve my English, so I came to England to study. Originally, I came for six months, but uh, I met my husband. <laughs> uh, we met at the college. Actually, we met on the way to the college, in the street. You met in the street? Yes. It was uh, my first day, and I was walking up the hill to the college, and Theo, uh, that's my husband, was driving up the hill, and he stopped and offered me a lift, which I refused. <laughs> you refused? <laughs> yes. But uh, we ended up in the same class. I went into the class, and there he was. <laughs> and your husband's from Bolivia, isn't he? Yes, he is. So that means you speak the same language? Yes, Spanish. So why did you decide to live in England? Well, mainly because my husband had a job here and uh, well, we kind of decided we wanted a place in the middle between uh, Spain and Bolivia. <laughs> a nice idea. And you have two sons? 
Yes, I do. Uh, Xavier is 21, nearly 22, and James is 19. So what's it been like for them growing up in England with parents of different nationality? Well, I think because we live in Oxford, a cosmopolitan city, they didn't notice it too much. They're both bilingual, presumably? No, not really. Oh. Because when they were children, even though we spoke to them in Spanish, they always replied in English. Hmm, interesting. Uh, tell me, how much contact has your family here had with the families in Spain and Bolivia? I think more with my family in Spain, because it's closer. We always spend summer there. Uh, two or three weeks, usually. And the Bolivian side? Well, my husband keeps in touch all the time, but his family have never been here. Never? Never. Mm. We went to Bolivia once, when Xavier was 18 months old. James has never been. So, what are the children doing now? Xavier's at university, and James has just finished school. He's been working in a restaurant, saving money to travel. And what do they want to do in the future? Well, James, he's going to travel to Bolivia at last. Mm. <laughs> then he's going to university to study biology. And Zabia? I think he wants to work in the foreign office. Anna, is it possible to sum up the pros and cons of bringing up a family in another country to your own? Well, I think in a way it's good because you can take the best things from both cultures... But I don't think my sons will ever feel 100% English because their parents aren't English. It's quite tricky. Tape script 1.9. Pronunciation. 1. Rose. Goes. Does. Toes. 2. Meet. Beat, great, street, three, paid, made, played, said, four, done, phone, son, one, Tape script 1.10 Mother Enjoy Apartment Holiday Population Tape script 1.11 Everyday situations 1. I need to make an appointment. It's quite urgent. I've lost a filling. We have a cancellation this afternoon. 2.45, if that's OK. That's great. I'll be there. Two. A medium latte and a muffin, please. Have here or take away? Here, please. That'll be £3.90, please. Three. I can't make the meeting. I'm stuck in traffic. Never mind. We'll start without you and brief you later. Oh, hang on. We're moving again. I should be there in about an hour. Four. Can you put in your PIN number and press enter? Oh, no. I can't remember my number for this card. Oh, what is it? Have you got another card you could use? Five. Sparkling or still? And do you want ice and lemon in it? Sparkling, please. Ice, but no lemon. No problem. Is that all? Six. I don't think you've met Greg. He's joining us from our New York office. Hello. Good to meet you. I've heard a lot about you. Yeah, at last we meet. <laughs> I'm looking forward to working together. Seven. How many bags are you checking in? Uh, just the one. And did you pack it yourself? Yes, I did. Eight. The lift's on your right. Would you like someone to help you with your luggage? No, thank you. I'll manage. OK, if you're sure. Here's your key. Enjoy your stay. Nine. Please 
told. Your call is important to us. All our operators are busy at the moment, but one of them will be with you shortly. If I have to listen to that again, I'll go mad. Can I help you? At last, a real person. Do you know how long I've been waiting? Ten. There are still tickets for the 545 performance, but the 845 performance is sold out, I'm afraid. That's fine. We'll have two, please. One adult and one child. Right. Two for 545. The doors open at five. Tape script 1.12. Role play. One. Maria, this is my friend Peter. We came to England together. We come from the same town in Germany. Hello, Peter. Nice to meet you. I hope you're having a good time. Two. Excuse me. I don't think this is mine. I ordered a medium latte and a muffin. Oh, sorry. My mistake. This is for the next table. Three. Good evening, reception. Uh, I'm in room 216 and my TV isn't working. Can you send someone to fix it? Of course, sir. I'll send someone immediately. Four. Excuse me. Can you tell me which is the check-in desk for Prague? I can't see my flight on the screen. Oh, dear. You're at the wrong terminal. Flights to Prague go from Terminal 5. You can get a bus to the terminal over there. Five. OK, everyone. The meal's ready. Can you all come to the table? Bring your drinks and just help yourselves to the food. Mmm, mm, it smells good. Uh, can we sit where we like? <laughs>